everyone, and welcome back to Ion Radio. I'm John, and today we're going to be looking at the Clan um, Clan Invasion BattleTech Kickstarter campaign box that we got. Originally, Ken and I planned on unboxing all of our stuff together, um, but I ended up getting my stuff in the very first wave that sent out, and then Ken ended up getting it two weeks later. So what we're going to do is I'm going to unbox the majority of the things that I got and then we're going to put in a clip of Ken opening his salvage boxes. I'm also going to update you on what I ended up getting painted in the month of October. If you recall to our first data link, it was the October painting challenge and I actually got quite a bit painted, including some of the models that came in the Kickstarter. So let's take a look at everything that I got in the Wave 1 Battletech Clan Invasion Kickstarter. Here it is, my wall of mechs. So I ended up getting a triple star kernel level and um, then picked up so then I had at least two of all the mech boxes. So I have three of the core sets and I've already opened one obviously so I can show you the contents of that and then I got two of each of the Wave 1 boxes, except for only one of the Legendary. I figured I only needed one of the Legendary. I got the faction things for House Davian, Ghost Bears, and the Free Rosal Hawk Republic. Those are my favorite house, my favorite clan, and then my favorite minor faction. I have three salvage boxes of Urban Max. Hold on, let me see what else. I have three Legendary boxes, and then I have 10 Wave 1 salvage boxes of Omnimex. So let's take a look at those and we'll open them up. Here we go, all of my salvage boxes. We're going to start with an Urban Ant mech. I have three of them, they're all the same. So, little, little tiny Urbi, and this one's still locked. We got a little tiny urban mech. I haven't decided which factions I'm going to put my three urban mechs into, or if I'm just going to paint them up all as a mercenary. Each salvage box comes with the appropriate cards for that mech. So you get your one pilot card, and then the alpha strike cards, they're double sided. The alpha strike cards for the salvage boxes and the legendary salvage boxes are the same ones that come in the boxes themselves. So I'll show you that later. And then we have a little urban mech and we'll move these out of the way. So now let's open some of the Omni mech boxes. First one up. It looks like it is a Blackhawk or a Nova. Put him right down next to the urban mech. Next one. Ooh, we have a Sumner or Thor. This is one of my favorite mechs. And I also really like the scaling. You can tell that the heavy mechs are larger than the mediums. They did a very good job of scaling. Next up, we have, drum roll please, looks like an Arctic Cheetah. Nope, not an Arctic Cheetah, an Ice Ferret. I, to be fair, I'm not up 100% on my clan max. So this is an Ice Ferret Fenris, usually seen with Clan Wolf. We'll slide him in right there. Next box. We have a Loki, also known as a Hellbringer. is very tall. Oh, 
one of my favorite. A mad dog. Also known by the inner sphere name as a vulture. Being a big fan of ghost bears, this is a mech that they primarily used. And then we have a mad cat or a timber wolf, the iconic mech warrior mech. So it looks like I have gotten so far in the salvage boxes a complete assortment of the heavy mechs that come in wave one. And then we have an exterminator, also known as a gladiator. This mech looks really, really good, and it's the mech that's on the Kickstarter exclusive box art for their core sets. It's one of their assault mechs. And then we have an additional vulture. So I pulled two vultures out of my 10 salvage boxes. I'm not disappointed. I don't think you can have enough. I'll probably paint that up and have a, a huge star of ghost bear vultures. Next we have a storm crow, also known as a Rokin. Get it out of the box. Here we go. This is a pretty cool looking mech. And the last of my salvage boxes. Ooh, we got a Dashi, or also known as the Dire Wolf. Get these out of the way. This guy is pretty chunky. And now on to the salvage boxes, legendary. So I only got three of these, so I will not be able to get a full set. And the first one that I unbox is a Marauder. And the legendary boxes have a, or legendary mechs, have a different pose than their standard ones in the normal boxes. So that is supposed to be a Grey Death Legion. Um, Grayson Carly, and it comes with the legendary box card that would come in the normal box. On to box two of three for the legendaries. I have Natasha Kerensky's Dire Wolf Widowmaker. I'll give you a close up after I'm done unboxing all of these show you the differences between the two models. And the last one. It's the same thing. How unlucky. So this is an, another Widowmaker. So I ended up getting two out of the four legendary mechs from random boxes. Hey guys, it's Ken, and I'm going to be going through my salvage boxes. So I'm going to open them all up in front of you, tell you what I think of the minis because I'm really excited to see what I've got. Uh, and I'm actually just opening them up right now. We're going to go through that. And, Irby. and then I'll give you a closer look at all of the miniatures that I got in the Clan Invasion Kickstarter box. So hang on one second. I'm going to adjust the camera and we will take a look at what we got. Okay, so uh, I've already pre-sliced all of them. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and open up each one of these boxes and we will see what we got. So we already know that this is the Urban Mech, but I want to just pull it out so we can take a quick look at it. Oh, look how cute he is. That's nice. They got all the good features right there out of the Urban Mech. This is going to be a fun one to paint up, I think. All right, so we've got the Urban Mech. And we got the Alpha Strike cards in there also. Put him to the side. 
All right, first unknown clan invasion, wave one Omnimac. So let's see what we've got. And the first one is coming out. We've got an ice ferret. Pull them out of the box for you guys. Again, I'm loving the way these miniatures look. They really pull everything they've done out of the latest release. Same good quality plastic. I'll probably set these out for you in a minute. In fact, let's have our little army hanging out right here on the corner. We'll put the Orby back out because, you know, why not? All right, next one. Another random unknown one. In case you guys are wondering, I'm intentionally opening the boxes this way so I don't destroy them. What do we have here? This looks to be uh, a gargoyle, I believe. GRGL, gargoyle. It's a big looking mech, ain't it? Also known as a man of war. Put him over there. Next one, and as you can see, we're getting closer to that salvage box. Next one, the uh, legendary one. Let's see what we got here. I have not opened these yet, so this is all a surprise to me. And this looks to be a shadow cat. Loving the detail on these, it's really, you can see it really well. All right, one more before we get to the one that everyone wants to see. Here we go. And I love this pattern on the box. I gotta do that on the front of my mechs, just to make them look cool. What do we got? Ah, we got a Viper. You know what we need is we need to get these on one of those little uh, rotating turnstiles. I think that'd be really cool. So I did not go nuts. I didn't go for a Galaxy Commander pledge level or anything along those lines. All right, so now here's the one everyone wants to see. It's what's in the legendary box. Here we go. I even tilt it so I can't see it. You guys are gonna see it as soon as I do. We've got a mad cat, and I believe that is pride. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see that. Might be a lot of glare, but yep. We have pride in the mad cat. Or timber wolf, depending on who you're asking. Love the looks on these new Mad Cats. Let me see, I think I've got an old Mad Cat here. Hang on a second. All right, here's a really old Mad Cat. Compare it to the new one. And John, like I said, he's got a couple of my mechs, so he'll be able to do this in more detail with a couple of them. It's a lot bigger looking. This is a lot scarier. Anyway, so there we go. Here is my little collection of what came out of my boxes, including the legendary uh, Timberwolf. So I'm enjoying it. Uh, let's see what John's got. So here are the faction specific items that I got for my Kickstarter. Um, patches, they're Velcro for Ghost Bear, House Davian, and Free Razzle Hawk. We have these pins. I'll just open the one. They're they're all the same. And you can pin it to something if you want. Those are the connectors. They're pretty nice looking. Um, I'm not super happy with how Ghost Bear is very whited out. It's difficult to see. You can 
still see it, but it is difficult from an angle unless you get the reflection of the gold trim. Then we have these challenge coins. Um, we have Free Rossel Hawk, and on the other side we have, I believe, a Shadow Hawk. We have Ghost Bear, and of course on the other side we have a Kodiak. We have House Davian, and on the other side we have a Rifleman. And then we have the dice. I know people have talked about their horrible experience with their dice. Mine seem to be fairly uh, the same size, color and consistency. Um, like I was mentioning about the medallion, ghost bears are pretty whited out. You can tell it's a ghost bear because I know what it is, but it's just very white. The detail's not very good on that one. Razzle honk, they're fine. So those are the items, and then we have the shirts. The shirts seem to be good quality. There's the free Rosalhawk. On the back of them, they have the Battle Tech. We have Ghost Bear, which is my favorite, and then also House Davian. Now let's talk about these card packs. Um, in the first wave, you got Mercenaries of the Inner Sphere, Champions of the Inner Sphere, and Warriors of Kerensky. And they didn't really talk about what these really were. And because of that, I, I didn't know. Um, they ended up, one of the things that you could do with this Kickstarter is get a canon character. And this is how they did it. So if you look, we got a deck of cards. This is the Warriors of Kerensky one with the artwork that people wanted submitted for their canon character. And then on the back they have their name, what faction, and a little brief description of the character. So this is how they're going to make most of the people that kickstarted in the Kickstarter their canon character. And I have to say, I, I just don't care. I opened one of the packages because of how many I got. I got duplicates and that's probably going to be the only one that I open. I don't have a canon character. I ended up just switching it in for more Kickstarter stuff. Um, but for the most part, for me, because this isn't my character, this is pretty useless to me. It doesn't have extra stack or anything like the Alpha Strike cards. Some more things that came in it. It came with the paper maps, the Battery of Tukid. I haven't opened them up yet, but I now have three packs of this because of my Kickstarter pledge. So that should be interesting to look at. It also came with, you know, we got all these nice minis, but if you decided you wanted to not use minis and use old school, they came with a pack of the clan mechs that you can use on stands as targeting practice and a whole bunch of elements. They also came with a pack of posters. There's three double-sided posters in here and I'm gonna put up some pictures of them right now and just talk through them. You have one poster that is just a mad cat. It looks pretty sweet. And then on the other side, they have a map of the clan homeworlds and the Pentacon worlds. And I'm a sucker for maps and it's sometimes hard to find a good map of the clan home worlds and they have this very nice political balance table down here that tells you which planets the clans are located on i think this might be one of my favorite posters that they have next we have a poster and it has the clan invasion kickstarter exclusive um poster which i believe is clan jade falcon literally stomping on a Steiner mech in an epic battle. On the other side of it, you have a mech pilot that is shooting what appears to be a PPC at um, a rifleman. The last poster is a group of elements ripping apart a battle mech. And the other side of it is an armory picture of a mad cat, a clan wolf, um, beta galaxy clan mech, what it looks like. 
with all of the ordnance and the Omnipod weaponry laid out in front of it. Kind of like how you see sometimes those military um, jet fighter posters when they put all the ordnance that it carries out on the runway in front of it. That's kind of cool. So I ended up ordering a retaliation box, which is pretty much the exact same mechs that come in the game of Armor Combat. At the time, you couldn't get them anywhere, so I decided to order an additional set. Since then, we've had tons of different sales and then they came back into stock. So I don't really necessarily need another one of these. I have plenty. So I haven't decided, I might just make them a mercenary company. Okay, on to the main event. This is the Clan Invasion Battletech box. This is special artwork for Kickstarter exclusive. So let's open it up and see what's inside. So first we have some fiction that comes with it. Um, we'll take a look at that. Then we have a card pack of pilots and Alpha Strike cards that come for the mechs that come in this box. Some very generic dice. And then to the mechs and two points of elementals. The elementals are very small compared to what they used to be and especially most of the infantry that you see around is the Dark Age infantry. They have these two guys jump jetting in the back which is pretty nice. So it comes with two of them. We're gonna go and here's a Grendel. I'm going to be doing um, up close shots of all these and then comparing them to older mechs if I have an older mech of them. Then we have everyone's favorite, the Mad Cat. We'll jump down here, we have a Puma. This is always one of my favorite mechs. Um, back when I used to play Mech Warrior 3, I'd run it a lot. It, so much fun to have two PPCs on such a small little mech. Then we have a Blackhawk or Nova. Again, back to Mech Warrior 3. A lot of medium lasers, a lot of fun to use. My personal favorite in Mech Warrior 3 though was to equip everything with pulse lasers and then you just rapidly click your button to do a ton of damage. Last, we have the Executor. This is the one that we see on the box art. Paint it up as a Jade Falcon. I won't be painting my mech's Jade Falcon. I'll leave that to Ken. Then we dive a little bit farther into the box. And we have the Primer, which like all Battletech boxes, it just goes through the history of the inner sphere and explains the universe, which has pretty extensive lore. Then we have the rule book on how to play the game. And this is just your standard learn to play rule book with some of the clan information thrown in. This is not going to um, replace like total war. Then we have a copy of data sheets. Um, if you're into this type of thing, most people just print theirs off the internet. But if you wanted to take these, you could make copies and they have a couple of different variations for each of the mechs that come in the box. Okay, and then you know me, I am a sucker for maps. I, I just love the Inner Sphere maps. So we have an Inner Sphere map as of 3025. And then if you flip it over, it is a map of the Inner Sphere during the invasion, 3052. So it has the Commonwealth, um, Rosalhawk Republic, and then the clan invasion corridor right here. Next you have the quick reference, card stock, game rules. I really, really like these, and whenever Ken and I play, we use them, very useful. And then just in case you wanted to use st cardboard standees, it comes with some cardboard standees with some map hex. So you can change the way your maps look on the generic maps, which 
are coming up next. So you have two map sheets. They're both very generic. You either have a hilled plains or you have hilled desert. And that is the contents of the Clan Invasion Battletech Kickstarter box. Let's move on to the Clan Elemental Star. This is pretty glary. So I'll see what I can do. It comes with five points of elementals. They're all the same, and they're the same that come in the Kickstarter box. Um, I was kind of disappointed with this, but for how much they charge for it, you get very little plastic. And this box doesn't even come with any um, Alpha Strike cards, which kind of surprised me. I would have thought, um, because infantry and power armor aren't used that often, it would have been nice to have like a reference of what standard clan elemental armor was. But it didn't come with any, or even like a specific pilot or basic information on elements. It didn't have any of it, which was kind of disappointing. So now let's take a look at the clan command star. I'm gonna just open this up so we can get a better view of it. The command star comes with five mechs. That's how uh, the clan um, divide their forces up. I should have cut this beforehand and we'll probably do that on the rest of them moving forward. So it comes with five mechs and it comes with a pack of Alpha Strike cards and pilots. These cards and pilots are the same ones that come in the salvage boxes. Then we have a Shadow Cat. This is one of my favorite mechs. We also have a Dire Wolf, big and chunky. This is a 100 ton mech. We have a uh, Mist Lynx. All of the SRMs. And we have a Storm Crow. Lastly in this set, we have a Sumner, also known as a Thor. So those are the five mechs that come in the command box. Um, after I open all the boxes, I have some painted up and I will compare to how they look painted up compared to this. Next, we have the Clan Striker Star. Sorry, Clan Heavy Striker Star. Look at this, I did it ahead of time so you don't have to watch me struggle. Like always, they come with mech pilot cards and Alpha Strike cards for the mechs that are included in this set. So let's see what we have. We have one of my favorite mechs, the Vulture or Mad Dog. We also have a Viper with its weird hands. I always thought it was funny that clan mechs have all these fists and then they don't do any physical combat. We have next a gargoyle. He has some pretty awesome looking guns on him. They did a really good job of making these mechs a mixing point between like classic and then more of how Mech Warrior Online has more chunky mechs. So next we have an iced ferret. And finally in this set, we have a Loki or a Hellbringer. And there you have it. This is the Clan Heavy Striker Star. Now we're moving on to the Inner Sphere that came with Wave 1, which is Inner Sphere Command Lance. So let's open it up and take a look what comes with this. That kind of exploded. Your standard cards, pilot and alpha strike cards. First off, we have a stinger. This 
small little mech with some jump jets. It's pretty cool looking. Next up we have a, a Valkyrie. Followed by Two of the favorite mechs of people in all of Battletech. You have an archer with the missile pods open. I'm sure someone out there is going to mod it so then these missile uh, doors are closed. But it looks pretty awesome. And then this is my first one of this mech, a Marauder. You can see that it has the arms that made the targeting computers confused when the clan invaded the inner sphere, and that's how the Mad Cat got its name, because it recognized these arms and then the missile pods of the catapult. Hence, Mad Cat. Gun barrel's pretty straight, that won't take much to uh, warm it up and straighten it out completely. So there you have it. You have command lands. Now we move on to the second of the lance packs that come with Wave 1, which is the Inner Sphere Battle Lance. Let's take a look at these models. Like always, Alpha Strike cards and Pilot cards. And then we move on to the mechs themselves. We first have a wasp. Look at this little guy. Next up, just moving up in size, we have a phoenix hawk. This guy looks really good with those giant thruster packs that he has on. It should be a lot of fun to paint up. Next we have a Rifleman. This is one of my favorite mechs. I really like the way that this one came out. I haven't decided yet what factions I'm going to put my Inner Sphere mechs that I got in here into. And then a Warhammer. This is the first Warhammer I own. I know Ken uses it a lot in our campaign, so I'm pretty excited to get my own, paint it up, and then use it against him. So there you have it. That is the Inner Sphere Battle Lance. Last but not least, we have the Legendary Mech Warrior Pack. These are four mechs and uh, they're named heroes from the Battletech universe in their iconic mechs. And they come with different poses than the other models that have been released so far. So let's open them up, take a look at them, and then I will have comparison photos after. Okay, we have the cards, the pilot cards, and then the Alpha Strike card. So I'm actually going to open these up just so we can see the pilots. So we have Grayson, Morgan Kell, Natasha Kerensky, and Aiden Pride. We have them in their mechs. We have a Marauder, an Archer, cards stuck together, the Dire Wolf Widowmaker, and then a Timber Wolf. On the back of it, it looks like they have special rules to play as those specific characters. So now let's take a look at their mechs. First up, we have the Marauder. Pretty cool looking. Then we have this Mad Cat. What I like about this Mad Cat is its arms are far away from the legs. And when we go to do a more up close comparison, you'll see what I mean. The other Mad Cats, the arms are very close to the legs. It makes it difficult to paint. Next, we have the Archer. 
and if you notice that it's in a crunched down position, apparently this is in the lore. He crunched down, he squatted down so that a mech that he was fighting couldn't hit him. So that's why it's in this lowered pose. And then last we have a Widowmaker. Direwolf. And if you've already seen the legendary unboxings, now I have three of these. So I'm probably gonna paint one up in the appropriate colors and then use the other two and just throw them into um, whatever faction I want. So those are the four mechs that come in the Legendary Mech Warriors Battletech box from Wave 1. Okay, so now this is where we combine my video with an update. So here are all the models that I was able to paint over the last month. Um, we're going to go into detail with what I do and what I did. And then we're also going to compare them at the same time to the unpainted models and some of the older models that um, Ken had. I currently had no clan mechs before this. So let's take a look at everything. So let's start off with some Armada. Um, I ended up painting um, five models and then I went back through my entire TIE Fighter collection and painted engines onto them. I'm not going to show you my entire TIE Fighter collection. It would just take too long. So let's talk about first the Imperial Fighters. Um, for those of you that don't know, I have an entire set of extra aces that I have painted up in this first order color scheme. So I'm going to zoom in and probably just post some photos so you can see the detail. So I have Merrick Steel in a nice white um, first order color scheme. Then I have Rhymer that I painted up also in the white and then the Thai Phantom Ace in white. I really like the way it looks. Also, when I go to tournaments, a lot of times if I use Imperial, I'll bring my first order fighters. So then it's very clear which of the fighters are mine and which of them are my opponents. Next, I have a Mel's Miniatures model. This is Lando's Millennium Falcon, and I finally got around to painting it up to look like how um, Lando's Millennium Falcon looked in the uh, Solo movie. So as a quick comparison now, you can't run them both at the same time, which is kind of sad, but I have Han's Millennium Falcon, and I have Lando's Millennium Falcon, and I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. Lastly, I have Ketsu Fighter. This one came out very well. I'm very happy with the detail, and it wasn't as difficult as I thought. I painted most of the model, and then put a heavy wash over to change the light gray into darker grays, and then the white to gray, and then I came back in and I painted some of the fine detail, and I'll have to find a list that I can get her into so I can put her onto the table. Next on my painting list were a ton of Battletech tanks. I painted them up here in this urban camo. I really didn't want to paint up individual um, house tanks because it would be so many. I would need this many tanks for every faction, so I decided to just make them generic and the tanks are just part of the planetary force of whatever planet I want them to be on. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way they came out. And we're going to go into some more detailed pictures of each individual tank lance. Now moving on to some of the Clan Kickstarter models that I painted up. So this is an entire star of Clan Wolf Beta Galaxy Elementals with two of the blank models to compare to. They were very difficult to paint. 
Um, I know that they're to scale, but sometimes sliding scale isn't too bad because they're very small. When you compare them to even one of the small mechs, you can see how tiny they really are. Let's get some close-up pictures of these. Here are the mechs that came in the Invasion starter box itself. As you can see, I've painted these up in Clan Wolf Beta Galaxy as well. Um, let's jump over to some pictures and see the size comparison between them. We can see the size comparison between two of the older Mad Cat models that uh, Ken kindly lent me so that I can show you the size difference between them. As you can see, the Mad Cat in this Kickstarter is much taller, much as I would just describe beefier and a bit more intimidating. Um, the older Mad Cats look a little bit cartoonish for how skinny their legs and arms are. It just doesn't look well proportioned compared to the modern looking Mad Cat. The next mech that we have a comparison between a new and old model is the Blackhawk or Nova. And as you can see, um, again, the newer mechs are on a slightly larger scale and a bit beefier. But they look overall, I think, better. Look how skinny the legs are for in arms. And actually, pretty much everything is really skinny. It's really wide and really skinny, the older Blackhawk, compared to the newer one, which actually looks like it would be functional. Okay, here we have a clan command star. And let's take a look at each individual model compared to unpainted and painted. I have mine again painted in Clan Wolf Beta Galaxy colors. I really like the way these mechs turned out. Our next comparison between the old and the new is the Thor or Summoner. And I actually really like the old um, Summoner. It kind of looks weird with the thin arms. And I think that the max um, depth is a little bit too shallow. Um, but the new one looks absolutely gorgeous and a little bit more scaled out compared to the other one. Here's a comparison between the new um, Direwolf and the old Direwolf. The old Direwolf is pretty big, pretty chunky, but it is nothing compared to how big and chunky the new one is. The new one is very intimidating. When you look at the size of it compared to the other mechs, it towers over it, and you know that's a hundred ton war machine of death that's coming towards you. Next here is the Clan Heavy Striker Lance. It has some pretty nice models in it, and uh, only one comparison this time with the Vulture. Um, I really like the way the, the paint came out on them, and my plan is to paint all of my unpainted miniatures that I have currently as planned Ghost Bear. So our last comparison between the old and the new is the Vulture or the Mad Dog. The Mad Dog has the same issues that the other older mechs do and is that it's very, very thin. Um, I actually like the way that it looks and you can tell that the inspiration for the new one still shows similarities to the design features of the original. Um, heavy metal vulture. I feel that the newer vulture 
very much so looks like what the Mac Warrior 4 Vulture looks like, and hey, that was a great game, so no complaints at all there. Let's take a look now at the differences between the legendary Mech Warriors and their standard poses. Let's start off first with the Mad Cat. You can see that the legs are different along with the arms. And with this view, you can see that the arms for the legendary um, box is different and wider apart and farther away from the mech, which will make it easier to paint. Next, we have Kel's Archer versus Standard Archer. Again, the leg position is different and you can totally see that he is squatting down and is much shorter, well, not much, just like a centimeter shorter than the other Archer Standard pose. Next, we have the Marauder. And I was looking at the Marauder, and besides leg position, there really isn't all that different between the two models. Um, one's a little bit straighter and the other is torso twisted a little bit, but for the most part, they are the same model. Lastly, we have the Direwolf versus the Widowmaker, and these two models are the most different. You can see that the Widowmaker is a completely different variant of the direwolf. The arms weaponry is different. It has a torso mounted auto cannon that is different and also does not have the missile pack on the shoulder. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching um, me unbox most of my clan Kickstarter stuff. And uh, the update I had on what I painted uh, during my 30 minutes a day in October. I wasn't able to do every single day, sometimes getting held over at work or important family matters got in the way. But for the most part, I was able to actually do 30 minutes a day painting. And I feel like I got a lot done. I got the entire one part of Kickstarter painted in Clan Wolf colors. I was able to finish my tank vehicles and was also able to paint some Armada fighters. So I was very happy with it, and I really appreciate everyone posting in our Discord their work that they've been doing on their um, painting and modeling and hobbying as well. You're welcome to come join us. I'm gonna to continue to be posting pictures as I paint it. My next big painting project is all of the unpainted clan um, Kickstarter things that I showed off in this video. I'm planning on painting as Ghost Bear. So, working through the theme right now. Like, subscribe, throw down a comment, come talk to us. All of our social media links are down below. I'm John and you've been watching Ion Radio.